All right, welcome everybody to episode 11. Uh, we just uh, previously left off from episode 10. I believe Ethan is going to start his next trial. Uh, like he said in the, in the origami figure, they said that um, he has to murder somebody else in order to save his son. But we're going to we're going to find out right now. I wonder who he's going to kill. Gunpoint. Sure, we can make a deal, huh? Oh no! Oh! It's going down. To little girl's room. See, this guy is going off. I can't let Ethan die right now. Pull up, pull up, pull up. Go, Ethan. This guy's crazy. Oh, we're definitely gonna kill this asshole. I don't want Please. dope. Please don't kill me, man. I got children. He was laughing, He's shooting a fucking shotgun. This one, Sarah, and a little one. That's Cindy. Please, man. I want to see them again. Please. Please don't shoot. <laughs> oh, we about to pop him right now. No remorse. I'm a father too. But Had I have to. No <sighs> we just killed a man, Ethan. Take a picture. Oh, it even has that old shutter noise. Dude, that's crazy. Ethan just popped a man. In the gun grip. Oh. It's inside. I don't think you just pop it off like that. You have to like unscrew it. Oh. Never mind. Come on, where's he looking at? What's Sean looking at with the rain? That is looking really, really shallow for Sean. One letter? One lousy letter. Alright, I think Ethan needs to get just needs to bounce out of that apartment. Uh I'll get you out of that well, Sean. I'll come save you, and I'll hold you in my arms again and never let go. Gotta get him out of there. Now! An origami figure. One more trial, and I'll know For sure. <laughs> I was still able to use this thought, a uh, little feature when he was in the cinematic. It's pretty cool. We're gonna be Madison now. 
We're doing, we're doing pretty good here. Got a trophy. It's Sam. I got your information. And the owner of the apartment in Marble Street is a Dr. Adrian Baker. He's a struck off surgeon. They used to sell drugs to junkies on the quad. He made some cash and bought up some cheap-ass apartments, including the one in Marble Street. Of course, he got caught. He did a few months in prison and was struck off the medical register. Interesting. Thanks for the information, Sam. I owe you one. Hey, Matt, be careful, okay? I'm on it. Talk to you later. So now we're going to talk to a surgeon. Uh, does she? I don't know why she's here. The apartment where Ethan cut off his finger lives here. It's oh. Not much of a lead, but it's all I've got. Okay, so maybe the guy who owned the apartment sold it to the origami killer. I see where Madison's at right now. Hi. Uh, I was told that you could get the tropin without a prescription. Sorry, you were misinformed. Goodbye. Hold on. I, I, I really need your help here. I can pay. Well, why didn't you say so? Please come in. He has a creepy old man voice. Oh yeah, he's a creep. He's definitely a creep. Just look at the way he's looking at her. So... You're looking for betropin, my dear. Are you having trouble sleeping? How much do you need? I don't know, um, about three, four boxes. Well, no, that shouldn't be a problem. Would you like a drink? I was just about to have one. Hell no. Nah. I ain't taking nothing from you. No, thanks. Well, alcohol helps take the edge off the pills, don't you think? Anyway, we should drink a toast to our first deal. Oh, great. He's gonna try to drink something with me. She should, like, fake drink it. I haven't seen you around here before. Who told you about me? Uh... Evade it. The important thing is that we're here, right? Uh, clients. Do you have many clients? A few. I help to ease their anxiety. Get my hands been off, thin enough, hard working enough. I reassure those who find the system too difficult. I'm like a safety valve that keeps society from imploding. Over at the I apartment. You had some apartments for rent? I'm looking. Sorry, darling. Those are all booked up. Shame. I was looking for something around Marble Street. Ew, look at his face. It's so weird. Like, I know it's pointless to point that out, but... No, I'm not drinking. I am... Um, um, I'm, I'm not really thirsty. I'm not drinking this. I'll get your prescription. Won't be a moment. Wait here. Keep your eyes up, Madison. That guy gives me the creeps. Hell yeah. I better take a look around to see if I can find anything before he gets back. Quick, I gotta find something. He seemed to be upset that I wouldn't drink. I get the feeling I did the right thing. Don't make a sound. He's near. I'm not gonna go in there. Let's check in here. He retired a bunch of medical supplies on his way out. There's enough sleeping pills here to knock out an army. So a bunch of sleeping pills. Maybe a quick look behind those doors. I'll make up some lies if he finds me. All right, so take your time. Gotta be quiet here. The 
the doc be the origami killer? There's something about the way he looks. I like how she opens the door super like quietly, but then slams that cabinet. All right, there's nothing in here. Let's go back. Nice and easy. Yeah. What about? Let's go check around the bottles. Oh, yeah. I was gonna go back to the that door in the left. Doc seems to be interested in property, amongst other things. Right, so this is a room. What could be in here? Blue Lagoon. Maybe that's something. Let's see what kind of clothes he got on. Thought he stopped performing operations. Oh nah. Weird nostalgia for the past. Nah, fuck that. We out here. Yes. He if he has those vests, I know exactly what kind of creep this guy is. We gotta bounce. Just leave, Madison. Just leave. Let's leave. Screw that guy. I knew exactly what was going to happen there. He's a creep. He got upset about the drink. And then at the same time, um, he had a bunch of surgical gowns. He had a bunch of sleeping pills. No, he looks like he's, he seems like the kidnapping killer type. <laughs> Not messing with that guy. Now, a little bit of a recap. We are here with Mr. Norman Jaden about that uh, Jackson guy. That ID that he... Um, Analyzed with the RE goggles. Right, a junkyard. Now, a, a Mad Jack is suspicious of selling the killer's hey, car. Cracker. What you doing in there? He called me a cracker. Norman Jaden, FBI. Can we talk for a minute? Yeah. I'm looking for the owner of a blue Chevrolet Malibu 83. I don't give a damn how the car got here, or whether you stole it or not. I just want to know who bought it from. Sorry, ma'am. Don't ring a bell. I got a real bad memory for things. Perhaps I can help you to remember. If we find out that you sold the car to the man we're looking for, you're looking at some pretty solid time inside, Jackie boy. You trying to scare me with your big talk? I never saw your damn car. Now take a walk. Feeling sick. Got the sweats. Hands are shaking. Hope this works out all right. Oh, saw something. What's this? Blood. Now why is there blood here? Oh no. What's in here? Oh. He killed somebody. He's a killer. He's a killer. Shit, what do we do? Slide that thing. 
All right, here goes another battle scene. Hopefully, I don't get him killed. Crap, crap, crap. I have to be very careful with all these. Oh! Looks like we got some controlling, controller flicking here. Get the gun, get the gun. Yeah! Yeah! You're gonna tell me about the man with the blue car. Go fuck yourself in the ass. <laughs> uh, persist. I've no time to lose, Jack. I want to know who that car belongs to. Well, what you want don't mean shit to me. I ain't no snitch. You better just lock me up now, boy. Do you like fireworks, Jack? Because I bet them gas tanks are going to blow up real nice. Shit, man. Don't mess with the gasoline. Well, just say it was an accident. Or rather, I'll say it was an accident because you won't barely be able to talk, will you, Jack? You crazy motherfucker. You out of your mind, man. <laughs> I don't know nothing about this guy. He wanted me to get rid of his dirty car. Get him a new one with false plates. He paid cash. And I ain't the questioning kind. He said I was supposed to drop the word to a guy named Paco down at the Blue Lagoon when the car was done. Now that's all I know. We'll continue this discussion down at the station. You're under arrest. You have the right to remain silent. Anything? Oh no. Shit, not now. Anything you say can and will be. Hey. <laughs> you look like you got a problem, man. <laughs> the voice alteration. Uh do we have to bring this thing out? Keep your stance. Oh. I run out of fingers. Running out of fingers. <laughs> I'm about to use my tongue next. Okay. Turn around. Did it work? Did we arrest the guy? We got him. We got him, boys. We got him. They could have been real ugly, real fast, especially at a junkyard places like that. I have like a phobia for junkyard places, well, or rust and all the scrap metal kind of, kind of gets to me. Recap on them, they. We're in a fight. So you think the origami killer killed Manfred? That makes sense. Didn't want him spilling his guts to us. And you suspect Gordy Kramer, right? Oh, him or one of his men. Gordy has the time and the means, not to mention the fucked up attitude to go along with it. He's only a suspect, but he's a pretty guilty looking one. Are these your files on the case? Yeah, I've been working on them for a couple of years. Uh, I built up a mountain of paperwork. Magazines about origami? You think the killer could have subscribed to one of those? If he was even remotely interested in origami in the last 30 years, his name may be in there somewhere. The trouble is, there's over 500 names. I guess a squat. I'm yeah, but Do you have anything to eat? Well, I'm no chef, but I should be able to make some scrambled eggs if you like. Oh, we're about to get great. I'm soaking wet. I need to warm up a little. Is it okay if I take a shower? I'll be my guest. Go to my bedroom. It's the next door. Oh, I'll cook up the eggs while you're under the shower. Are we about to cook us some eggs? Some scrambled eggs. Bam. Two eggs. I like how the game kind of directs you to the next step. Which is useful, you know. I'm not, I'm not complaining about it. Better than going like a little scavenger hunt, finding out what to do next.
it's pretty accurate game design if you ask me did i even turn on the stove ew Gotta scram it up again. I don't know why. I guess it's one of those time things. Uh, Lauren. Some nerve, that girl. <laughs> Some nerve. Yeah, she almost killed you. <sighs> Poor Manfred. We've just been toast in the old days. I should be ready by now. Alright, turn it off. Bam. Right in the middle of the plate. That is some impressive aim right there, Mr. Shelby. It don't look like scrambled eggs, but it look like a pancake, if anything. I took the liberty of borrowing your bathrobe. Looks better on you. <laughs> then we're going to talk to her in the kitchen. Hey, that almost looks good enough to eat. What's that? The notebook I took from Manfred's place. According to this, about 30 clients bought spare parts for Royal Machines in the last 10 years. The killer may be one of them. Oh, you know, checking out the alibi of 30 clients one by one, that's a lot of legwork. Except that if we cross-check them with the list. The list of subscribers to Origami magazines. You still got that, right? Yeah, yeah. Of course. Lauren, wait. Oh, well, she's onto something. If the killer really used a royal typewriter, and if he subscribed to an Origami magazine, his name should be on both lists. Well, uh, Lauren, uh, I mean that's just an assumption, but yeah, I suppose. His name is here somewhere. Help me. We're gonna find him. Oh, they're gonna be doing some investigation. I mean, the, the, the subscription was only like 500 people. That doesn't seem that hard to do, especially when you're comparing it with like 30 names. I think they might have a name. The only guy whose name was on both lists died when he was 10. What are you going to do now? Dig up his coffin, make sure he's dead? I know it doesn't make any sense. Unless the killer was only using his name. But why use the name of a kid who died 30 years ago? Well, that's what we came to find out. The name is John Shepard. It should be on a grave around here somewhere. You never give up, do you? All right, so I'm guessing now we have to find a gravestone. She's convinced she's onto something. And here's me thinking we're wasting our friggin' time in this friggin' cemetery. All right, names are going outwards, so might as well check these. <laughs> this girl knows her mind all right. No point in trying to reason with her. All right, so those are the children. So I guess we're on the, the right track. Oh wow, now it's letting me check it. All right. Excuse Bernard me. Harris. I'm looking for the grave of a young boy who died about 30 years ago. His name was John Shepard. You wouldn't know where it is by any chance. The children's graves are in the next plot. Thanks. Oh my God, this camera angle is killing me here. Jacqueline Robert, Ralph Rivera, Shirley White, and we're looking for John Shepard. Who's this? J Jerry Mendez. No, 
Let's check the other side. I think the other side is a children plot too. Unless these are children. I doubt these are children. Look how big these coffins are. Oh, it is children. Oh no, that's almost teen. This one doesn't even have a name. Roy Smith died when he was eight. It's cold. It's raining. I'm standing outside getting soaked. Hey Scott, where are you going? John Shepherd's grave must be somewhere around here. Did anyone ever tell you you shouldn't shout in the cemetery? Why wouldn't you? Dead don't mind. So I guess it's over here. What should be next to this lady right here? Watch one of these be Mr. George uh, Lubbers. Uh, well, don't worry about it. I can manage alone. <laughs> She's like, don't talk to me. Rodney Garcia. Did Lauren find it? Please find it. Well, I think we found it. I found it. Hey, did he sneeze? <laughs> when he was 10. There's an origami figure next to his name. Origami figures. That's one hell of a coincidence. These flowers are fresh. Looks like someone's still tending the grave. Oh, youngin. That one I knew well. You knew John Shepard? I've worked this graveyard nearly all my life. I remember what happened. It was in 77. October, I think. Yeah, go for nothing, hoodlin'. Get the hell out of here! God, beat it! You lousy, no good brat! Come back when you fuck it! Comes home from work. He's drunk again. What are we gonna do? It's pouring rain. We're gonna get soaked if we spend a day outside. Well, this won't get beat. The rain never hurt nobody. Come on, let's go play. Bet you can't catch me. Oh snap! We're gonna be playing as a kid, but uh. Times are now, and I might have to end it here. Uh, we saw everything we needed to see here in episode 11. Uh, Ethan did pop off with the trial, but uh, as of right here, we're gonna be playing a memory in the next episode. But uh, until then, I'm gonna wrap things up here. Like I said, hope y'all enjoy, and I will see y'all next time.